We determine absolute configurations of stereo centers in order to identify specific enantiomers from each other. Let's take a look at how to go about doing this process. You can follow along on page 175 of your Bohart and Shore organic chemistry textbook. Recall that enantiomers are stereoisomers that are mirror images of each other, as compared to diastereomers, which are not mirror images. You can use absolute configuration nomenclature to determine the stereochemical relationship between pairs of molecules, such as whether they are enantiomers or diastereomers. But first, how do you determine configuration? We follow a set of rules called the kahn ingold prelog rules to do this, or the CIP rules. But since the CIP rules only apply to stereocenters, the first step is to therefore determine if the molecule has any. If no stereocenters are present, there is nothing for you to determine the configuration of, so you don't need to apply the CIP rules. Let's use this molecule as an example to figure out how to go about applying the CIP rules. Since it does have a stereocenter, identify the priority of each of its substituents by labeling each atom it is bound to in descending order of atomic mass. In the case of this molecule, the amine group is the highest priority because nitrogen has the highest atomic mass. Carbon has the second highest atomic mass, but two substituents are bound to the stereocenter by carbon. So, we must differentiate between the two in order to decide which has a higher priority. To achieve this, we now need to consider the next atoms in each substituent, which we refer to as being two atoms from the stereocenter. If these second atoms are also identical, compare the third atom, and so on. In this case, though the ethyl and propyl groups have the same first and second atoms, they do differ at atom number three. The third atoms of ethyl are three hydrogen, while propyl is bound to a carbon. Since carbon is a higher priority than hydrogen, we assign a higher priority to the propyl group than the ethyl group. Hydrogen, having the lowest atomic mass, will always have the lowest priority. Now that you've determined the priority of each substituent, let's move on to the second of the CIP rules. You must now rotate the molecule such that the lowest priority substituent is going into the page, marked with a dashed bond. The lowest priority substituent on our molecule here is hydrogen, which is currently a wedge bond. There are two ways to go about rotating the hydrogen to point away from us. First, you can build the molecule using a molecular modeling kit, which most pit professors will allow you to use on your exams. Build the molecule, rotate it as needed, and then draw a structural diagram of how it looks using the desired rotation. The second method of rotating your molecule does not require a modeling kit. You can switch the bond directions of two different pairs of atoms without modifying the same atom twice, and you will get the needed result. Since you want hydrogen to be pointing away from you, let's switch it with the ethyl group here. Then, switch the remaining propyl and amino groups, and you're done. The end result is that we've rotated the molecule completely without making or breaking any bonds. Now, to check our work, we can compare how this looks with the diagram we generated from the 3D model. They are the same. All right, we're almost done here. Now that we've rotated the molecule as needed, draw an arrow connecting all substituents in decreasing order of priority. If the arrow runs clockwise, the absolute configuration of the stereocenter is R. If the arrow runs counterclockwise, the configuration is S. Now that we know the absolute configuration of a molecule, we can implement that information into its name, and write the full name out as 3R hexen 3 amine The 3 indicates the location of the R stereocenter, and is optional if there is only one stereocenter on our molecule. So, R hexen 3 amine works too in our case. You might be realizing that all we've done after all this time is find this letter R here. So, after all this hassle, what does this letter R, the absolute configuration, tell us? Based on their absolute configurations, we can determine the relationships between two stereoisomers, such as whether they're enantiomers, diastereomers, or identical, and some other things. I'll talk about this in the next video. Thanks for watching.